Hey fam, salam, happy Ramadan, hope you're doing well. We're continuing our reading of this tafsir. It has been highly educational, I must say. Not disappointed at all, I can completely understand why it's recommended. We were in Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat numbered 177. Let's continue, okay? And before we get started, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Nirajim, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Alright, exciting. Let's see. If a person gives of his wealth despite his love for it in order to draw closer to Allah the exalted this is indicative of his faith part of giving one's wealth despite one's love for it is to give charity when one is healthy and inclined to be stingy that's kind of true it's like when everything is going really well you can sort of have this feeling of deep stinginess you have to watch out for it right that's true Hoping to become rich and fearing poverty. I mean, there's a saying where if you have a sort of excessive wealth, you penny pinch and can become a miser too sometimes. So you have to watch out for it. So he is right that the rich stay rich many they believe because they don't spend or in proportion of their wealth. I mean, I listen to a lot of finance podcasts and sometimes... It can be really revealing the way they think, some of them. That's very true. Similarly, giving charity when one does not have much is better because in this situation one may want to keep it because of what is expected and need of poverty. That's insightful. So when you are really struggling and you decide to give, that has a deep merit, right? It really does. It really does. That's like if you have you know some bread and that's all you got and you break off a piece and share that's pretty commendable and if someone is a millionaire and they maybe donate two percent of their budget you know who really gave more of a higher percentage you know it is also better to give what is precious and what one loves of one's wealth as Allah the exalted says you will never attain righteousness until you spend in charity of that which you love Al Imran 392 so, you don't give, you're going to donate, like, a really nice rooster. You don't give the ugliest one you have that's missing all the feathers. You can give a pretty good uh, stud. All of those who do these things are among those who give their wealth despite their love for it. So, really comes down to then not letting your love of wealth override your desire for charity. Very important. We all have to watch out for that. Then Allah tells us of those on whom it is to be spent, who are the most deserving of your kindness, such as kinsfolk, those whose joys and sorrows you share. Now that's powerful. Kinsfolk is like the kith and kin, right? So those who are most deserving. So if you're a businessman and you donate charity to another rich man so he can go on vacation with his wives, maybe you have to look for someone better to help out, right? Those whose joys and sorrows you share. They are the ones who support one another and help one another to pay the dihya, blood money, if need be. Okay, that's educational. Those who share your sorrows. That one is an interesting point because it's like you're actively seeking out people who you can help, you know, who share a similar struggle with you. It is the best and most proper of righteousness to take care of kinsfolk by spending on them and speaking kindly to them, according to how closely they are related and to the extent of their need. Okay, so how close they are related and the extent of their need. You can spend money but also speak kindly. I've been calling my brothers more. I mean, most people don't even like to talk on the phone anymore. They just want texts. But I've been actually calling people and talking to them so that, you know, you can establish more. It's very important. Mostly they talk about video games, which I love talking about. So that's one point of reference where you can get in the door and break the ice. All my brothers like talking about video games. <laughs> and later, squeeze in a little Islam, you know what I'm saying? They're probably watching. I let them know, all of them, which my YouTube channel is. So if you're watching, little bro, you better be watching now. <laughs> all right. Orphans who have no breadwinner and do not have the strength to be independent of means. You know, like those kids at the border, man. Those kids who are down at the border. Oh, man, they need 
need so much help. They need so much help. This highlights to us Allah's mercy towards his slaves and shows us that he is more merciful to them than to a father to his child. Because Allah has enjoined his slaves and made it obligatory for them to spend some of their wealth on those who have lost their parents so that they be equal to those who have not lost their parents. So here in Islam, a deep emphasis on taking care of the orphans. The, I mean, American foster homes are pretty brutal. They're pretty brutal. We all can find a way to make time for the little ones all over the neighborhood, right? Wherever you live, try to really be interactive with them and help them. Moreover, as the reward matches the nature of the deed, well, look at that. The reward matching the nature of the deed. Whoever shows mercy towards the orphans of another, mercy will be shown to his orphan if he dies. So look at that. Another thing about Islam is this mercy towards children because I've been really thinking deeply about what makes an obstinate tyrant, right? There's a lot of talk now, especially since I study political science. Authoritarianism, totalitarianisms, and, you know, just history of the monarchies and feudalism different topics as such, you really begin to analyze how certain rulers, you know, harming the children. I mean, look at China's, for example, forced abortions, the one-child policy of China. Now, China has doesn't have that policy anymore. And now, they've been like the feminists, they are, that were promoting, uh, anti-natalists, I believe they were called, who are promoting women to not have children. China, because they control much of the internet, the Great Firewall of China, has censored those people and has deleted some of their postings and ability. They have their own Chinese version of Twitter. And I guess on those apps, those feminists have been being targeted. But it's really strange how, you know, China, when they did that, the forced abortions, that was definitely a lack of mercy for the children. They were overpopulated and they could have figured out a better solution maybe, but now they have more men than women and now a man has to support his wife's parents addition to his, so there's a big push on finance, you know? But then if you study Confucianism and you study different Chinese philosophies, you come to understand they have a different view of the world. And if you study communism, you know, as a system of government you also learn but nations who don't show mercy towards children movements that don't show mercy towards children people who don't show mercy towards children um, they really change their spirit changes truly a nation that cannot love its own children and guard them and protect them and you know rid bad influences from the children is a nation that falls or creates a very sick sense of soul, I'd argue. So when Islam mentions you need to show mercy towards the orphans who are very vulnerable and lonely, you know, it really brings empathy into your heart. The needy. This refers to those who are subdued by need. I like how he worded that. Subdued by need. It really is a subjugation. It really overwhelms you. Need. And humiliated by poverty. That's why I don't judge people who are poor. And actually, you know, I'm trying to be very minimalistic now. I already was, really. But even more so, you know? That's kind of more of an American ideal. There's like, you know, maybe that's the tribal Cherokee side of me as well. Or the Italian kind of philosophy angle. But this very minimalistic, bare bones type of existence where you let go of the marketing, you know? Here... That way you can never be humiliated by poverty because you don't value poverty, you know? So here in Islam, it's telling us right here, you know, that people can feel humiliated by poverty, but we ourselves don't have to see them as humiliated, you know? We see who they are, their character, and know that their humanness is, and, you know, what connects us to them. They have rights over the rich so as to ward off or reduce their need. Hence, the rich should give as much as they can afford. You ain't going to take it with you, you know? You're not going to take it with you. So, so far, Allah is encouraging us, as we know, take care of the orphans, take care of the needy. Now it says, wayfarers. The wayfarer is the stranger who is cut off in a foreign land. Allah encourages his slaves 
to give him some of their wealth in order to help him on his journey. So the alien resident is the wording that's in the Bible. The alien resident. Today, even in, even in Homer, when I read Homer's Greek works, hospitality towards the traveler was important. Here in Islam, the wayfarer is important. So it's, you know, a commonality there. Because he is most likely in need of help and has a great deal of expenses. Yeah, if someone's new in a land on their journey, giving them water, wherever it is you happen to meet them, on a hiking trail, someone didn't bring a sandwich, give them a sandwich, you know. You live by an airport, someone, you know, couldn't get a hotel booked, help them find an Airbnb, you know, different ways we can help people. Hence the one whom Allah has bestowed the blessings of living comfortably in his homeland and so on should show compassion towards his brother who is a stranger. Yeah, so don't get too arrogant in your soft pillow. You may be comfortable, you know where everything is, but show mercy, you know, to those who need it. I remember when I went to Washington, D.C. to go check out the University of Georgetown. Oh, it was a little scary because you don't know where anything is. You got to pin on the Uber driver. You don't want to go too far and get lost. I mean, it was you get nervous asking people where things are. There's a lot. There's some people who are more adventurous and they won't feel lost no matter what. But I'm kind of a person who I need to know everything has to be mapped out and I got to know exactly where everything is before I go. And help him in whatever way he can. Even if that is by giving him food or means of transportation or protecting him from any wrongdoing that may befall him. And so on. Oh, so it's like, imagine you have someone like you're in a dangerous neighborhood. Someone isn't from there. Like, let's say you're in the hotel, right? You're, I don't know, you just come across someone and they're like, hey, do you know somewhere to eat? Let them know you shouldn't go in this neighborhood. You shouldn't go in that neighborhood. Be wary because there's high crime. Because the traveler might not know. Right? They might not know the dangerous areas. They might think everywhere is safe. You know? You gotta be careful. People who are like, oh, well, you know, the media makes it sound more scary than what it is. It's like, that's not a genuine advisor to a wayfarer traveler. Right? You should tell the traveler, hey, you happen to meet them at the cafe, right? And they're like, oh, I'm from out of town. You know? Some tourists you can tell. Um, when I was working in tourist areas, I would always try to tell them the good restaurants or places they could go. You know, you have to watch out. One of my friends, her friends, went to Cancun, Mexico. The cartel had hung some bodies off the wall. And the people at the hotel told the people at the Cancun hotel, you don't walk around in the neighborhoods. You stay on, on the resort and you do not travel outside. So that's a way in which people who work at the hotel are taking care of the wayfarers who are in their charge, right? You work at the hotel, you're the uh, concierge, right? The concierge is in charge of, you know, telling you where to go, where to go out. They kind of are a way of helping the wayfarer figure out where it's safe to go and where not. If you're a journalist and you're going to go off the rails and go out there, okay, go do it, but... It doesn't mean you give bad advice to a tourist or someone else. So we all can have ways in which we remind people to be safe, right? Give them advice, especially if they're traveling. So it's nice that the tafsir encourages us to do that as well. Very important. Take care of the traveler. And those who ask, they are the ones who are faced with some troubles or desperate need would dictate that they should go and ask for help such as one who has to pay for damage caused accidentally or has to pay a tax that has been imposed by the authorities. Okay, so those who ask. So if someone says, I need help, they need to, you know, pay for this damage, maybe like a car accident, tax. That was interesting. There's a lot of taxes now. So if someone needs tax help, try to help them out. With taxes here, it says pay a tax, but you can also help people... I think with a good tax advisor because sometimes I've gone to get taxes and some people there you're like why don't I get this deduction and then you go to someone else and they're like oh this deduction blah 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 it's a little bit of a game with the IRS system it's a little bit weird our tax system but recommending good tax people is important you know this also applies to one who asks people for donations for the maintenance of public utilities okay Public, such as mosque, school, bridges, and the like. Such a person has the right to ask, even if he is rich. Interesting. 
that seems like a different tax system because here public schools you can ask for okay so donations because usually that's mosques understandable because it's kind of like private market public utilities usually the companies here in the private sector has to deal with that in a way even though it's like a public utility huh that's interesting but either way donations making sure that if someone's asking you for a donation and you know it's legit and you believe they're going to use it in a good way go on in and do it that's interesting very informative so help the orphans help the wayfarers help the needy help those who ask uh, all stuff that Allah compels us to do definitely all right what do you think Phil? happy Ramadan